First one of the season. Don't look at me like that, Joe. I didn't look at you any type of way. He did, and I'm going to make sure that y'all can see it because he did. First one of the season. Welcome to Valley Vision. I'm Abby Alonzo, Joe Mitchell, Mikey Shiaza. We got a whole crowd in here today. Um, we're going to recap that Grambling game, that win in Death Valley, some LSU volleyball, soccer, golf, you know, the usual. But before we do, I do want to acknowledge that it is 9 11. Um, it's a tough day for a lot of people. I was one, so I don't have um, the straight on perspective or recollection of it, but I did just get to visit the 9 11 memorial and it was gut wrenching and it absolutely put things uh, into perspective for me. So to all those who are affected today, for the families of the victims, for anybody who's just having a hard time, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Uh, I'll be doing a stair climb later just to remember and we won't forget thoughts and prayers. Moving on, just wanted to put that out there. We're gonna talk Grambling, uh, that blowout, 72 to 10. I think that was kind of, we knew that was gonna happen. We did talk last week that maybe they, they kind of got complacent. They didn't. Defense may have started to at the beginning. They pulled it together, 72 to 10. It's a good confidence boost for this team, right? You come off an opening game loss, an ugly loss. You have a lot of adjustments to make. You come into week two, first home game, and you get a big win leading up to SEC play because now they're going to Mississippi State next weekend, and that's not going to be easy. What looked good in this game? A lot looked good, but again, you have to take into account who your opponent was, and no shot at Grambling, but this is the SEC. It's a little bit different of a game play. Jane Daniels, five touchdowns in the first half. That's something that Joe Burrow and only Joe Burrow did before him, so that was good to see. Of course, his confidence is up after that, so that's something – Hopefully he can carry that momentum, that confidence forward. But again, grambling. Like this is, not, this is not a true test of what this team looks like. You saw all of the receivers get involved. Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., um, Chris Hilton, all of them. I will say this, Chris Hilton needs to be used in the offense more. It's, it's almost like I've heard that before. Uh, did you say it? Have you said it before? <laughs> I you may, may have. have. I, may, I have. may not have listened. But it was on full display yeah. this weekend. He didn't play against FSU. And then he comes in and he has a beautiful, I mean, what? God, it was 30, 34? It was a long ball. It was a long ball, which is nice to see from Jane Daniels. Um, and a really, really good place pass, too. Yes. And that play was really pretty. I saw the replay of it, I think, this morning. Um, but Chris Hilton is somebody who can open up that offense. Who else can open up the offense? Um, well, what's his face? Logan Diggs. <laughs> Completely blank just now. I've got the phone up. We're doing a live, so it's kind of throwing me off. But Logan Diggs, we had questions about the backfield and the run game. And I even said, you know, is there a threat? Because if we're going to be a good football team, you have to be able to do both. Pass, run. But we didn't really have a run threat against FSU. So to see Logan Diggs, the transfer from Notre Dame, who had over a thousand rushing yards last year, come in and be able to run hard. He's explosive. He, he made a threat of the run game. That was something good to see. Something you hope that it wasn't just uh, a, a weekend thing and can be prolonged throughout the season. Um, will it happen? I don't know. Thoughts on the backfield? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I, honestly, if it were me, and look, I'm not in the locker room. I don't, I'm not at practice, all that stuff. I totally recognize that I don't have all the answers. But I would like to see Logan Diggs and Armani Goodwin sp split the majority of the reps. Caleb Jackson is a really dynamic player as well. But at that running back position, I think Armani Goodwin and Logan Diggs gives you the most lethal combo. I think you're spot on there. I think that's really the only answer. I don't know. Did they say when Goodwin would come back? No. Um, it, no. No, okay. I, I don't. I don't have it. I don't have an answer on when he'll be back. Uh, but in the meantime, that leaves you Logan Diggs, right? Yes. He should be getting the bulk of the reps. Yes. Um, you mentioned Caleb Jackson, who was impressive for a freshman. He got a lot of reps towards the end of the game. Another one that kind of he could be somebody that maybe not this year, but in the coming years could be very good for this LSU offense. Uh, he what? He was the kick returner as well. Yeah. He had, he did well there too. Um, 
I was excited to watch him play. That's another guy that can bring more to the table, help open up the offense, just give options there. And, and I don't want to skip over Noah Kane either. He got the no. game ball. Like, he played really well. Uh, but specifically in a, in a running back room where you have so many capable guys, you do have to find, uh, you do have to find like a flow and who's mm-hmm. going to get the bulk of the reps. And to me, that would be Logan Diggs. Um, right now, though, I, I've got nothing negative to say about Noah Kane by any means. No, but I think we talked about, even before the season, who was going to be the guy – who was going to be that the RB1? Like, who was it going to be? I, and I think Logan Diggs is kind of stepping into that position. Well, SEC game play, completely different. So, again, we'll see if any of this holds over to Mississippi State because that's not going to be an easy game. But it's looking like Logan Diggs will be kind of the guy in the backfield. The O-line uh, saw a, f- a few switches. Um, Lance Hurd ended up coming in, they moved, Emory Jones bumped over to right guard, Miles Frazier left or headed to the sidelines, um, and Garrett Dellinger remained at left guard. Lance Hurd did a very good job, but Brian Kelly said that Miles Frazier will be the starter. Thoughts on the O-line? Yeah, that confuses me a lot. Um, To me, on the right side of that O-line specifically, obviously you have uh, Charles Turner at the center position, then you have Miles Frazier at the guard, and um, Emory Jones at right tackle. If you're going to take Miles Frazier out of the game to bring Lance Hurd in, I don't understand, other than maybe a lack of practice or a lack of knowledge of the offense, why would you not move Emory Jones to right guard and put a bigger body in Lance Hurd at right tackle? Maybe he's not as athletic. or But again, if he's not as athletic, you wouldn't want him at the guard position because right. they pull more. So that stumps me a lot. And again, I don't know what's going on in the locker room. I'm not at practice. I can't, you know, I can't give an in-depth analysis on that, but that definitely worries me. Worries you in a sense of... Well, in theory, if you have a, you know, if you're trying to create in pass pro specifically, if you're trying to create a situation where your quarterback has the most most amount of time or the most efficient amount of time to make decisions in the pass game, you want to give him the most amount of time to do so. And typically, you're, the the biggest bodies on the offensive line would do that to protect against the linebackers coming off the edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why you wouldn't move Emory Jones inside a really athletic, great offensive lineman? Um, is, is a little right. concerning Why? to is me. Is it concerning? Right. Do you think – I think they are testing the waters here, kind of similar to what they tried to do with Harold Perkins in that first game, who, by the way, was moved back to his rightful position where he can do the most damage. But I think they're kind of testing the waters, especially in a game where you're blowing out the opponent. Uh, why not kind of see who can play where kind of thing? But I do see what you're saying. And – there's questions. And, and to on, me, on uh, to me, I think the only the only answer I can come up with personally as to why we would have Lance Hurd inside and Emory Jones on the edge would be maybe we're leaning towards a run and gun type offense where you want an agile pass protection and a power run game uh, simultaneously. So if, yeah. that, if that's the case, then I can understand that. But, you know, if you're going to have a guy as big as Lance Hurd in the middle of that offensive line, you better not be giving up sacks on the edge, in yeah. my opinion. I was going to switch over to defense, but before I do, thoughts on Jaden Daniel, Daniels, because he, he, he did well. Yeah, he played well. Look, here, here's the thing, right? Uh, and, and again, so did Nuss. And, and again, we're talking about grambling. I think you have two capable quarterbacks. Um, in, this, in this grambling game, Jaden Daniels played really well. Uh, I don't feel like I learned a lot about him because, you know, we, he played grambling. Right, um, same situation. But at the end of the day, yeah, he played well. I want to give him his flowers where they're due. Garrett Nussmeyer also very accurate. Um, it's it's so difficult to sit here and recap a game like this. You can recap and you can read the stats off, but it's hard to um, like analyze because of the opponent and the the level of the opponent. And was it just a fluke? Was it just like is this is what we're seeing from these guys? Can it be translated to? The rest of the season so it's hard to sit here and speculate of oh this this player played great like he's gonna be wonderful but like is he so we're in a we're in a weird spot here trying to we'll know saturday yeah because i think that's the only yeah. the only thing you can't and obviously right we're not going to get into breaking down the mississippi state game we'll do that we'll friday do that later yeah we'll, we'll do, that do that friday but on that same token the reason i say we'll see that saturday is because mississippi state specifically in their defensive backfield, they have yeah they have guys that are going to give up the long ball, but they're also going to pick you off. Right. So they forced five turnovers this past week. So that's not something that we can afford to do. 
I think that's going to be the first real test aside from opening game, but like, have they made the adjustments? Are those adjustments um, sturdy? Yeah. Not just, they can get by, but are they sturdy enough to be good in the SEC? Switching to the defense, Mason Smith was back. Uh, I know he looked a little bit rusty, but that's solely because, I mean, he's coming off the ACL injury, whatever. He did relatively well for what the game was. Um, Harold Perkins, like I said, was moved back to the outside. Greg Penn was at Mike. He had a pick, I believe, as well. So I think they have figured out, like, that's exactly what needs to happen. We can't switch it up. Like, those two guys need to be in their rightful positions. Again, recapping on what Brian Kelly explained uh, as to why Perkins was even in the middle of the field uh, against Florida State, trying to prepare him for the draft or for the combine, whatever he said. I think that's not the way to do it. I think they figured that out. The adjustment has been made. It was a good adjustment, if you ask me. Here's where there still were questions in this 72 to 10 blowout, the frickin' secondary. And that has been a question mark for months. And you were hoping for answers in game one, you didn't get the answers you wanted, so you were hoping in game two, it you still didn't see what you needed to see to convince you that, hey, we're going to be okay moving forward. Because the defense got off to a slow start at the beginning of this game. I mean, they allowed Gremlin in seven plays to drive 83 yards down the field. Uh, Denver Harris gave up a touchdown in, in man coverage. So it, it was there was tackling issues. It was... It was not – I'm not convinced that the secondary is going to do its job moving forward. I'm not. And they got it together after the first few drives and, and towards – especially in the second half. But, like, you can't come out slow like that against State, against Arkansas, against Ole Miss. You can't do that. So, yes, you're playing Grambling, but if you're allowing a team like Grambling to just drive down the field, we've got issues, you know? And, yeah. I, I, and, and I know we said that it may be a coaching thing um, before this game, that the talent's there. It's, I just – there's something's missing. I think it's clearly a chemistry thing. Um, okay. Uh, amongst the defensive backfield. And I know Brian Kelly, when asked about if certain guys would play or not, he said, um, he said he's not going to put somebody on the field who's not in, totally bought into the process. Hmm. And he's not exactly sure – uh, how many of the guys on the team are totally brought, bought into the process. That's which, concerning. Which for me is very concerning when he's in his second year and has brought in over 80 recruits of his own. Um, at that point, you can no longer say, of course, there's upperclassmen who were in a previous coaching staff and all that kind of stuff. But when you have 80 guys on the team that are your guys, um, we, we can't use the they're not bought in. We can't use that. Uh, that, that so is that anymore. an excuse or is it the truth? I think it's both. I think it can be both. It can be it can be the truth and still not be acceptable. Uh, no, not acceptable. If 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 that's the concern, that's very concerning. If you have guys that aren't bought in, you can't expect to see success translate onto the field. If yeah. you can't even get the 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 little things right within the chemistry of the team in the locker room and on the practice field, you're mm -hmm. shit out of luck trying to get it on the field. Yeah. I mean, really. And look, I'm the first one to tell you. I told you, I still think we can win 10 games. I still think we can win the SEC. I'm not like, I'm not bashing. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think this team, there's so much potential for a lot of success, but it's got to be figured out now. And if it starts with the team chemistry and guys not being bought in, that needs to be nipped in the bud and figured out. But I, I, that could also be an, a, kind of an excuse thing on, you know, we're not translating – our like potential into the field so I'm going to say it's somewhere off the field well look the first step to being an elite team is win win your division and right and so right now the two favorites to win the division are both one and one with top 10 losses that's LSU and Alabama so if we handle our business we'll, I yeah. think we'll be fine you know I whenever I was watching <clears throat> the game one of the broadcasters said damn wait till they get off the field and see what else is happening in the SEC it's, it's wide open boys like yeah. I mean Tex stuff, Texas A&M was another upsetting favorite. Bama yeah. I mean Clemson yeah so it is wide open like this is not end all be all like LSU sucks that's not what I'm saying no I'm saying that things need to be fixed before we move further into or start SEC play next week 
Uh, just a quick little nugget. Mason Taylor did leave the game in the first half for an ankle injury. They said he jogged back out of the locker room. He obviously did not go back into the game, but that's because they were letting a lot of different guys get um, time and snaps. Um, there has been not an update on that injury, but if he was jogging back out of the locker room after rolling his ankle, it doesn't seem to be anything too serious. Before we continue with volleyball and soccer recaps, make sure to hit that sub button. We are trying to grow. We just did our first game day vlog, which will be out this week. Talked to a lot of different people, got a lot of good content, shotgun some beers, um, learned how to play beard dice. Beer die. <laughs> I've never played that before. Wild, right? Um, yeah, Mikey lost his phone, got all my steps, closed all my rings. So anyway, we got really good content for y'all, but the only way that we can continue to do that and hopefully get more content is if you subscribe and support us, share the show, comment, whatever you need to do, support us. We support you. We appreciate y'all. Volleyball recap, lost to Southeastern on Sunday. Um, they lost the first two sets, came back in the third, won the third, and then lost the fourth. Um, and it was, I think, Southeastern just kind of outplayed them because if you look at the stats, LSU had more kills, assists, and aces, but the Lions had a better hitting percentage, so more accurate blocking and digging just all around, just kind of cleaner – Cleaner play from Southeastern. Journey Robinson locked in her third 20-plus kill performance of the season. She had 22, and she matched a season high of 362 hitting percentage. And then Anita Anwuzi matched her season high of 13 kills, as well as her season high hitting percentage with 667. Um, and that's actually the third time this season that she's hit over 600. So, I mean, the numbers are there. It's just, I think, a matter of outplaying the other team um they will play this weekend i believe in at texas a&m or they're heading to texas uh for a tournament this weekend they are now three and four hopefully they can get that record back up to even maybe even more because it is a tournament um good luck to y'all this weekend soccer beat northwestern on sunday to close out all of non-conference play, they beat them two to one taylor dobles with the brace and if you don't know what a brace is that means um exactly two goals in a game. So she scored all of LSU's goals uh, against Northwestern. They won two to one. Um, didn't start the last game. She did not start. Remember, that was the game that they started off super, super slow, had a two and a half hour uh, lightning delay, and then came back and, and put it away. But Taylor did not start that game. So she started this game. Great response to not being on the field for the last game. Uh, if that's 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 a way to make a statement. I'm going to score all of the goals for, for us. Uh, they did have a slow start. So head coach said that, remember, last time we recapped their game, they got off to a slow start. Thank God for the lightning delay that they were able to kind of put things together and come back and actually play. They did not um, repeat that. So right out the gate they were going at it, which is something you want to see heading into SEC play because they do start SEC play this week. Just like football, they'll face Ole Miss on Friday, which is going to be kind of a revenge game because Ole Miss is the team that knocked them out of the SEC tournament last year. So you're looking for a little bit of revenge and for them to keep that momentum going forward. Golf starts their season today. Just want to wish those girls luck. They were ranked one, three, and four, I think, in some major um, golf media uh, preseason polls. So... I mean, they're looking like they're going to be pretty good this season. They do start today in uh, the Cougar Classic in South Carolina. So good luck to those girls. And we'll round out with some quick, quick, quick Tiger T. Flage, you know, she's uh, a baller on the court, rapper off the court. Just remixed All My Life, the song by J. Cole and Lil Durk. I think she released it three days ago. Um, but she's still working. I know they're practicing or workouts, whatever, for basketball. And they... Because what, KP said she had a meeting with K, uh, Kim Mulkey and stuff. So they've already started. That has not stopped her from releasing new music. So go check that out. We appreciate y'all. We'll be back on Thursday with some more LSU sports updates. And then we'll preview that Mississippi State game on Friday. Make sure you come back. We appreciate y'all. See y'all soon.